Hi everybody, in this lesson I'm going to show you how to arrange a meeting by email in both formal and informal style. Welcome back to English for Professionals, I'm Derek and I'm here with another short lesson for you busy people. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell and join my email list. Every two weeks I send out my free vocabulary email with additional business English, words from the news and everyday English for you to learn. The link to join is in the description below. And now let's get started with the lesson. So we're going to look at two different ways to arrange a meeting by email, formal and informal style. Let's start with the formal style. Susan Hill is writing a formal email to David Patton, who she met at a trade show last week. They had a nice conversation and now she wants to follow up and arrange a meeting so they can talk in more detail about a possible cooperation between their companies. So she starts off with a formal greeting, Dear Mr. Patton. So dear is the most common way to start a formal email. Then she writes, it was very nice to meet you at the WGT trade show last week. It can be important to remind the person about the last contact you had. It's quite possible that Mr. Patton had many conversations with many different people at the trade show. Then Susan writes, I would like to schedule a meeting to discuss a possible cooperation between our companies. So this is the meeting request. This is the reason for writing the email, again very polite. I would like to schedule. And then she also explains what the meeting should be about. A meeting to discuss a possible cooperation between our companies. Then she writes, would you be available next week on Wednesday or Thursday afternoon? Please let me know if one of these days would be convenient for you. So here she's using would, which is a polite form to ask about availability and suggest times. And then she writes, I look forward to hearing from you. So this is a closing part of the email referring to the next contact. And then we have best regards Susan Hill. This is the closing, the most common way to close a formal email. Great, now let's look at two possible responses to Susan's mail. In the first response, Mr. Patton doesn't have time on the days Susan suggested. So Mr. Patton writes, Dear Miss Hill, thank you for your email. A very polite and friendly way to answer a formal email. Then he writes, I would be happy to meet to discuss a cooperation, but I'm afraid, or you could write, unfortunately, next week is not suitable as I will be out of the office all week. So he explains why it's not possible. And he does this in a very polite way using would and I am afraid and so on. Next he writes, would it be possible to meet the following week on Monday or Tuesday morning? So here, because he can't make the original suggestion, he makes a suggestion for an alternative date. And he finishes with, best regards, David Patton. And now let's take a look at Susan's response. Susan starts her email with, dear Mr. Patton, and thank you for the quick reply. So if somebody replies quickly, this would be a common way to start your mail. Then she writes, the following week on Monday works very well. Shall we say 9 a.m. in your office? So here she responds to his suggestion and makes a suggestion about the time. And then she finishes with, I look forward to meeting you again. Best regards, Susan Hill. Great, now let's take a look at the second possible response to Susan's original mail. In this response, Mr. Patton does have time on one of the days Susan suggested. Mr. Patton writes, Dear Miss Hill, thank you for your email. Again, friendly and polite way to answer the original mail. I would be happy to meet next Wednesday to discuss a cooperation. Shall we say 3 p.m. in my office? So similar to Susan's response in the last one, he suggests a time. Then he writes, please confirm whether that works for you or if another time would be more suitable. So again, very polite and friendly, asking for confirmation about his suggestion. 
And he finishes with, I look forward to meeting you again. Best regards, David Patton. And once again, we'll take a look at Susan's response. Susan writes, Dear Mr. Patton, thank you for the quick reply, similar to the first one. Next Wednesday at 3 p.m. in your office would be great. I look forward to seeing you then. Best regards, Susan Hill. So a short, polite and friendly email confirming the time and a nice statement looking forward to the meeting next week. So that was the formal version. Now let's take a look at the informal version. Kim and Marco are colleagues who know each other very well. Kim wants to arrange a meeting with Marco. Kim starts with, Hi Marco, a very common way to start an informal mail, and then she asks, How's it going? Again, an informal way to say, How are you? Then she writes, Just wanted to ask if you have time for a short meeting next week to discuss the new project. Maybe on Tuesday morning. So she uses just wanted to ask, which is a very informal way to make a request. Then she says what the request is and makes a suggestion of the time. Let me know if that works. This is a very informal way to ask for confirmation. Then she finishes the mail with thanks, Kim. A common way to end an informal mail when you're asking for something. Now let's take a look at two possible responses to Kim's mail. In the first response, Marco doesn't have time on the day Kim suggested. Marco writes, Hi Kim, all good here, thanks. Hope the same goes for you. So again, he's responding to her question, how's it going? Very informal, nice, friendly. I'm afraid Tuesday morning doesn't suit. I'm in other meetings all day. How about Wednesday? I'm free the whole day. So here, again, he uses a nice expression, I'm afraid it doesn't suit, and he gives a reason. Then he makes a suggestion in a very informal way, how about Wednesday? And then he explains his availability, I'm free the whole day. Then he finishes the mail with, thanks, Marco, similar to Kim in the previous mail. And now let's take a look at Kim's response. Again, Kim starts with, Hi Marco, and then she writes, No worries, I could do Wednesday in the afternoon. How does 2 p.m. sound? So, no worries means, no problem, it doesn't matter that you don't have time. And then she responds to his suggestion, I could do Wednesday. So, she's saying it's possible for her, and then she suggests a time. Then she writes, looking forward to it, cheers, Kim. Again, a common way to end an informal mail, cheers, Kim. So cheers can mean thank you. It can also mean bye. Great, now we'll take a look at the second possible response to Kim's original mail. In this response, Marco does have time on the day Kim suggested. Like in the first response, Marco starts with, Hi Kim, all good here, thanks. Hope the same goes for you. And then he writes, Tuesday morning sounds good, shall we say 9am? So very short, informal response to her suggestion, it sounds good, and then he suggests the time, finishes with, thanks Marco. And now we'll see how Kim responds to this email. Susan writes, hi Marco, perfect, 9am on Tuesday it is. Very short response, confirming the time, Then she writes, see you then, which is a very common way to end an informal mail when you are referring to an arrangement or an appointment that you have made. So there we have it, how to arrange a meeting in both formal and informal style. I hope you liked the lesson and if there are any other areas of business English or email writing that you need help with, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to cover them in an upcoming lesson. If you liked the lesson, hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already and join my email list. Every two weeks I send out my free vocabulary email with additional business English, words from the news and everyday English for you to learn. Check it out, the link is in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.